No Tracks Television, going strong for 25 years. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Skidoo Snowmobiles. Experience that Skidoo feeling. Yamaha, conquer snow. And by FXR Racing, maximum versatility for all conditions. Sometimes in the snowmobile industry, it seems the more things change, the more they stay the same. Confused? Let me explain. There was a time when only Arctic Cat had A-arm front suspension, but things changed. Now front suspensions are all double A-arms. There was a time when only Skidoo had rider forward ergonomics, but things changed and now everyone does. Even skid frames are all generally the same and really work on the same principles, but it's here that we've seen the most unique designs, most notable of which would be Polaris's Rush. In 2019 though, it's Arctic Cat that has taken a completely different approach to skid frames in their mountain sleds with the release of the Alpha One single rail skid frame. But there's much more to it than just a radical looking design experiment. This idea was just a concept, you know, that we started with a long time ago. Everything in mountain was going narrower. Way back when everybody was putting two wheels on. We had so many other things going on, you know, new chassis, new motors. There's always something new. This was kind of a little out of the box. Built it up as a proof of concept. Bunch of guys at the shop, we all kicked in, laid it all out on the computer, built it all by hand, cut the bottoms off rails, welded them onto a beam, built it out of square tubing, and you know, just started with the rough design with all the geometry that we knew we wanted for the suspension movement, but put that beam into the track and then made, you know, custom make a track for it and get it out on the snow. And the first concept worked incredibly well. As I said earlier, the Alpha One is more than just a cool design experiment. When Andy and the rest of the engineers at Articat set out to build the Alpha One, they had a few specific goals in mind. We wanted it to be light, you know, taking the cross shafts off, making a single beam that's hollow and strong and stiff, takes weight out of it. You're not carrying snow around because it sheds out, it comes off. Uh, the beam, you know, it doesn't have any cutouts or holes or things that the snow can grab onto and build up and stick to. You know, increased maneuverability, the ease which, with which it rolls over. And then along with that, when it's rolling over, leaving the track in contact with the snow so you get, so you get traction and flotation with the ease of maneuvering. Of course, all of these benefits mean nothing if the system isn't durable, and that point was not overlooked. You know, Articat Mountain Sled had a really good reputation for durability. We didn't want to sacrifice that. So when we designed the beam, yeah, it's only one beam, but it's a closed shape. It's hollow. It's got more stiffness. Making it hollow, it's, it's really thin. It's not an eye beam. It's a boxed in closed section. So it's been optimized for bending in all directions. We expect the durability to be as good or better than our traditional suspension. Obviously, Alpha One is a radical departure from the traditional skid frame as we know it. When you first look at Alpha One, it seems like there's not enough stuff inside the track. But this was intentional and it came with a huge list of benefits. The number of parts is significantly less. From two rails individually to one rail, we don't have cross shafts. Took a lot of the extra bits and pieces and integrated them into the components so that magnesium casting that makes up the front of the rail, it mounts the shock, it mounts the limiter strap, it mounts the anti-stab wheels, it mounts the idler wheels, it mounts the pivot for the rear shock. So that one part does the job of 15 different components. So the suspension itself, depending 154, 165, it's about four and a half, five pounds lighter. And then the track that goes with it, you know, we put a lot of work into the track to take weight out, refine the track design, that adds another six pounds. So it's like 10 and a half, 11, 12 pounds from the shortest to longest. So the track and skid frame are a whopping 10 to 12 pounds lighter than a traditional setup, which is nothing to scoff at. But the Alpha One does realize another weight-related benefit you may never have even considered. The weight of the components is one thing, but the weight of the snow that a skid frame can hold when you're in the back country, it can be 30, 40, 50 pounds that's carried in the skid frame when you turn uphill and you're carrying that snow with you. So the weight savings of the parts is one thing, you know, even if it weighed the exact same as a traditional one, it would still work that much better because of those, you know, not carrying the snow and the maneuverability and the traction. Arctic's new Alpha One skid frame is a radical departure from the norm, and it proves one very important point about new concepts and ideas. Just because something has been done a certain way forever doesn't mean it's the best or even just the only way things can be done. Andy and his team have proved that thinking outside the box can lead to better ideas and ultimately better snowmobiles. Does Alpha One work? 
Absolutely. But we're gonna cover that side of the story in a test ride coming up very soon. So stay tuned. Hello? Hey, this is Mark Lester calling from Snow Tracks Television. Is this Darcy? It is, Mark. Hey, Darcy, I heard through the grapevine that you just might have a bunch of vintage Yamaha snowmobiles. Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I have quite a collection. Well, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I would uh, like to invite you to come up to Snow Tracks Television's world headquarters and bring some of your vintage sleds with you so we can talk about them. Yeah, I could definitely do that. I also just picked up my new 2019 SRX. I'd love to come up and go for a ride with you guys and get a chance to break this thing in. Well, we've got snow and we're ready to ride, so let's do that as soon as possible. Can't wait, thanks. So Darcy, this is the fleet of Yamahas that you brought for us to check out today. Let's, uh, let's have a good look at this Enticer 300. What vintage is this guy? Uh, this would be a 79. Man, that is a lot of years ago, and this was an iconic snowmobile. Tell me a little bit about uh, the whole Enticer thing started. What, what was the first Enticer? Uh, the first Enticer uh, actually was in 77 when they came out with the ET250. That was a points and condenser sled, which worked okay, but then from there it progressed and they went to the electronic ignition, which was far better. And then it evolved to the 300 twin that we have here, also the 340. I think it's important for people who don't have the sense of history that maybe you and I do. What was the big deal? I mean, these things shot Yamaha to number one sales. You, you had to line up to buy one of these things. What were some of the technologies? Maybe what was the most important technology that Yamaha brought to the market? Uh, I would have to say that undoubtedly it was probably oil injection, not having to mix fuel prior to going for a ride. Just as long as your oil reservoir was full, way you go. When they became popular in the mid 70s, Everybody was nuts about oil injection. That was like the incomparable. It was, uh, there were some doubters out there. Didn't have the confidence that the oil would actually get to the motor and they were concerned about having engine issues, but it was obviously a proven uh, way to go. And they, they made considerable amount of power for a smaller CC engine. Great fuel economy and reliable. Yeah, they were. They were bulletproof reliable, just like all Yamaha. It doesn't matter what Yamaha makes. You gotta say their stuff really lasts. I think too, do you think the molded rubber track was like a big deal? I mean, everybody else had those crappy steel grouser riveted With the cleats, things. Uh, oh, the barred golly. cleats, yeah. Remember back in the day too, and snowmobiles tended to load up maybe a little bit, the two strokes, so you'd want to lift the back end and maybe give them a shot of gas. And every once in a while, someone would get one of those cleats in the shin. And, uh, or, or someplace else that or, hurts. Or someplace worse. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely right. I just love this. I want to take it for a little spin. Let's go and talk about the, uh, the next one you brought up for us to see. You and I had a little talk about the snow scoot, and I told you that I bought two snow scoots, one for Luke and one for AJ, and I paid $12.49 Canadian for them. But aside from that, where was Yamaha going with this? Well, in reality, which people might find to be quite shocking, actually, is that the sled was designated to be an adult sled. Hence the reason the throttle uh, didn't have the uh, safety screw that you uh, could adjust the throttle. It ended up being more of a segment designed for the kids than adult. Well, I remember these things when they first came out, and I remember going to the introductions with Yamaha, and they never talked about kids using these things. It was all about adults. And strangely enough, I actually do fit on here. I mean, this is not exactly 200 mile a day territory. They were just a great investment for kids. And okay, what, what's the deal now? I paid $12.49. What are these things going for now? It varies, but most commonly you'll see them at that $2,000 number and up from there, depending. It kind of makes me frustrated that I sold those two scoots because uh, they're like gold now. I mean, it's, it's crazy how that stuff has gone up. And it, it's really cool that there's that sort of value attached to these old girls. Let's, uh, let's go over and chat a bit about this one, because this is near and dear to my heart. I am a SRV alumni. I had a 1981, which quite frankly, I thought was the best looking year. It was silver and a kind of a gray metallic blue. Agreed, yes. Oh yeah. man, that was a sweet sled. And I remember when I got that thing, I mean, I could get people to empty out of a pit stop and come and look at it, because they were like the Yamaha snowmobile to have. And this is a mid 80s version. What were they powered by? They ran a 540 fan cooled. 
twin cylinder, single carb, decent power, and again, reliable, and a sharp looking sled. Regardless of color scheme, they were a pretty, uh, pretty neat looking sled. You know what I like about this is that you get a bunch of people together who've got a sense of history and you start telling stories and it can go on all night. I mean, it, it just goes and goes. There are so many great memories. It definitely goes back to my childhood. I started out on an ET250. I fell in love with the machine and then I fell in love with the, uh, the brand itself. My wife likes to think I'm a bit of a hoarder. I say I'm a collector. Um, but yeah, I just, I really love the brand. Give me a laundry list of the Yamaha stuff oh, you got. Gosh, uh, off the top of my head, I mean, three wheelers, four wheelers from the 80s on up, plow my laneway with, uh, with a Grizzly, inverters, generators, the stereo in my shop is Yamaha, basically the whole gauntlet. What's your latest Yamaha acquisition? I actually just recently picked up my new 2019 SRX Sidewinder. Love the look of it. I haven't had a chance to actually uh, ride it yet, but uh, I'm hoping that maybe we'll get to do that shortly. My first impression was how amazingly smooth and linear and powerful this machine feels. At lower speed, it's still quite responsive, it's controllable, not rangy in any way, shape or form, just very smooth. At higher speeds, the acceleration is still smooth and consistent, but continuously pulls and pulls. The IQS system much as I've been able to test it so far. Very uh, quick reacting, smooth, handles excellent. I have nothing but good things to say about it. It was a real privilege getting to know Darcy. In case you didn't notice, Darcy's die-hard, Yamaha or nothing commitment to the brand is not just serious, it's a lifestyle. His passion for Yamaha drives everything he does, whether it's snowmobiles, dirt bikes, or power products, he's all in for Yamaha. Maybe one day in the distant future, we'll interview Darcy and have him talk about his classic 2019 Sidewinder SRX Turbo. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Here at Snow Tracks, we're truck people. Yeah, I know, no surprise, right? Because we use these things every single day, we need to get the most out of them each and every day. And that's why we use a Chevy 2500 crew cab long box with a Duramax diesel engine and Allison transmission, because it'll haul anything we ask it to. But more than just hauling a trailer, we chose to equip our trucks with Marlon recreational decks. And while you may think this is just a sled deck, well, you'd be wrong. Marlon is expanding their product line year to year and delivering unique products that answer questions that we've been asking for quite some time. Right up front, we went with the newest version of the Marlon Explore Pro deck. Yeah, there's a lot of sled deck options out there, but we look for unique and innovative features, and Marlon has a whole lot of them. The full aluminum decking means the deck is here for the long haul with zero plywood to replace. The integration of the super clamp and super track for securement makes tying off a load super easy and infinitely rearrangeable. And the super glides mean that we get excellent traction and safety where we need it with the proper groove locators for skis to get the sleds in the right spot every single time. And the overhauled ramp features super glide wide glides as well as a new slide extrusion for the ramp to make it more functional and even better. Now that's all well and good, but there's a whole lot more included with the Explore Pro deck that truly makes it stand out in the industry. The beefy headache rack with integrated LED loading lights is stylish but supremely functional, while the underdeck LED lights allow you to see what's in your box. The telescoping 12-foot rear ramp is lightweight and also equipped with super glides and the all-new integrated rear LED brake light keeps you seen, but will also glow white when wired into your reverse lights. Add to this the UHMW embedded slide inserts for easy transformation for two sleds, even in the harshest condition, and the new beefy aluminum deck feet with adjustable leveling risers that will position your deck at the perfect height above your truck's box, as well as some beefed up internal extrusions for increased strength. And you have yourself a list of unique features that truly cause this product to stand out in the industry. Now up to this point, we've only used our Marlon decks during the winter months. But with their expanding line of options, we can do a whole lot more than just haul sleds and snow bikes. 
When you add on the 16-inch wide telescoping side ramp, you can now use your deck for way more than just winter products and quite easily load an ATV or a side-by-side -side onto the deck. Now, an 8-foot Explore Pro will take some of the smaller side-by-sides, but what if you have a four-seater that's extra long or a short box truck? There's a couple of options from Marlon for side-by-sides, but the one that works with our Explore Pro deck is called the Side-by-Side -side Riser. This bolt-on addition is pretty incredible and makes your truck look like a SEMA showpiece. It bolts up to your existing Marlon deck and allows for side-by-sides up to 76 inches wide and 120 inches in length, or with an optional extender will allow for a 165 inches long wheelbase. That's nearly 14 feet and more than enough for today's even biggest and baddest four-seat turbocharged monsters. With the riser installed, it still allows you to pull a tag trailer without interference, offers a front tire wheel cradle for safe loading, ample traction and tie down points, and also a winch mount plate should you wanna install a winch for loading and unloading. The optional single folding ramps make loading easy and come in two forms, 10 foot versions at 48 pounds or 12 foot at 57 pounds. You get all this functionality in a 220 pound bolt on package that will truly revolutionize the way you look at a sled deck. Power sports people take their toys with them. We know we take ours everywhere that we go, but finding a product that's gonna haul your toys 12 months of the year over four seasons of use, that can be a little tough. However, the Marlon brand of products truly stands out, offering features that we demand and can't find anywhere else. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. Our affinity for longer track trail sleds is no secret. Yes, there's definitely a fun, flickable likability to a 120 or 121, but for pretty much all of us here at Snow Tracks TV, the added traction and better ride quality of the longer track sleds is definitely worth the trade-offs. All of this is true when we're speaking about longer track sleds in general, but when we get more specific, there are often even more benefits to having a longer footprint, and these benefits will be different from sled to sled. Skidoo's 2019 Renegade XRS isn't anything new, and it's not drastically different than last year's model. To be honest, it's not different at all from last year's model. But revisiting this sled brings with it the opportunity to discuss a little further what we think is great about it, and go into more detail about why we feel this way. For starters, and back to my original point, the Renegade XRS handles better than the MXZ XRS, and here's why. Skidoo's Gen 4 chassis is pretty incredible, both in its engineering and its performance. It's hard to find many faults with this platform at all, but if we had to come up with one, it would be the handling. While not at all bad, the handling of this sled is far less settled and predictable than others in its class. We attribute this to its geometry combined with an extreme forward riding position. Some people would say that the precision of this sled is all they care about and it's enough for them to love it. I'm not one of those people. Here's why the Renegade is, in our opinion, the better choice when it comes to a G4 Skidoo. The longer track length helps settle down the front end of the sled. It actually makes this sled easier to handle and more predictable. Combine that with more traction and a better ride, and you've got one stellar package. Combine it all with Skidoo's 850cc stump puller, and you've got a thing of beauty. The goodness of the 850 can't be overstated. Nearly everything about this motor borders on perfection, and on a day-to-day -day basis, we have nothing but praise for it. With that said, the only thing we don't like about it, and we're getting pretty nitpicky on this one, is the vibration through the handlebars. It's not extreme, and it's not a deal breaker, but it's definitely noticeable, and it's something you need to keep in mind when you're weighing your new sled buying options. Skidoo's P-Drive primary is almost as important a piece of technology to the snowmobile industry as E-Tech was, lightning fast back shifts and giving the engine the ability to hit peak shift RPM almost all the time gives this sled a feeling you simply don't get anywhere else. Again, we have to get a bit nitpicky here though, and this one has absolutely nothing to do with the clutches themselves, it's all about how the clutches have been tuned. All of us here at Snow Tracks agree that this clutching setup is just a little bit too aggressive on initial engagement. It's actually difficult to take off from a dead stop without spinning the track on an 850 Skidoo. The engine is crisp and runs super clean, but engagement is abrupt. This abrupt feeling continues as you attempt to drive the sled smoothly at slow speeds. Once you're rolling, this problem all but disappears, but again, it's something to note if you're shopping in this class. 
Skidoo has become extremely well known for the industry's highest finish standards and everything about the 2019 Renegade XRS oozes build quality. From the fit of the bodywork to the finish on the tunnel, all the way up to the look and feel of the switch gear, Skidoo does quality like nobody else. And this goes a long way when you're dropping serious coin on a brand new top of the line sled. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Snowmobiles, MBRP Power Sports, race inspired, trail proven, and by the wide world of Arctic Hat. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the like button and then subscribe to Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel that's constantly being updated with fresh content.